Welcome into the Cubs Recap Podcast, a production of our YouTube channel here. The Recap, as well as available audio only anywhere you get your favorite podcast with my partner, Gordon Wittenmeyer. I'm David Kaplan. Okay, before we get started talking about my hopefully playoff bound Cubs, <laughs> why are you standing with a white castle behind you? Oh, Cap. So I found uh, the National League uh, wild card playoff race. This is the fine dining version of the NL wild card race, uh, which means you know nobody wants it. Those who appreciate it the most are drunk. And whatever you choose, whatever goes in to the – whatever gets in is going to get out of you just as fast. So that is – like I got myself a slider. Wow, so you're telling me – that even if my Cubs get in, they're going to go. They're going to go through the playoffs like a White Castle, in and out. <laughs> Have you seen the playoff field and what your boys are up against? Yeah, got to get a little extra sleep for Justin Steele, and we'll be okay. Oh, good lord! I'll tell you what, man. That's He's run out of gas. What the Cubs and the Reds have in common is they have one pitcher that they have to win his start every time he pitches or they got no chance. The Reds is yeah. Hunter Green. The Cubs is Justin Steele. And they lost both of those teams on Wednesday, lost that guy's start. That's not a good sign. No, I think Justin Steele, all kidding aside, is out of gas. He's gone yeah. way past his career high in innings. And I think he is tiring in a big way. He was really good last night, the first three innings. Cubs have a one nothing lead. The next thing you know, you blink, and he's just getting, you know, hit hard. Not home run hard, but a, six consecutive hits. Get out. You know, you can't blame him. He's had one hell of a year. He just hasn't yes. had this kind of workload before. And and this is this is not about choking in big games or anything like that. As you said, he's just out of gas because he's shown big in big games up to this point. Yeah, he's a really good pitcher. Tonight, you and I are taping well, this might, on Thursday. I just Tonight, the slider. We might yeah, have to sli- finish this podcast pretty soon. Yeah, the sliders are really good, man. I love them. Uh, yeah, it ain't, ain't going to last in my system. Though. No. So, tonight, it'll be Kyle Hendricks against Johan Oviedo, who has really good stuff. He just struggles with command, and that gets him in trouble. I think the Cubs should win tonight. Hendricks has been throwing the ball really well. You get three with Colorado, and that shit gets real, Gordon. You go to Atlanta and real fast. Yes. Yes. So, yes. What's what's your thoughts on what they might be looking at? I'm I'm telling you, man, not only do you got to basically win out before you get on that road trip, but then, you know, keep this in mind, Cap. They don't, this isn't about, keeping pace with the Reds and the Marlins. Basically, we're talking about the Reds and the Marlins at this point, but you might as well throw in the Diamondbacks if you want. Um, They don't hold the tiebreaker against any of them. So they have to beat them out. That's three teams they have to beat out. Now, that's three teams, so four total for two spots, yes. But if we're talking about the Diamondbacks getting hot right now and rolling like it looks like they have, and we're talking about the Marlins, the Reds, and the Cubs, who are all separated by a game going into Thursday. Cubs don't own the tiebreaker against either one of them. They have to finish a game up on those teams. So the only tiebreaker the Cubs pace. own, the only tiebreaker they own is San Francisco. And Giants are toast, man. They're gone. And I think we can probably both agree on that. Yeah, absolutely. I thought they were gone once the Cubs swept them in that series a couple of weeks back. So let me throw one more thing. Let me let me throw one more thing about the tiebreaker because I've looked all this stuff up today uh, as it relates to all the teams involved. You might say, well, what if they all finish tied, right? What if it's a three-way tie for that spot? The way it works is you look at the head-to-head sort of in a round-robin way. The Cubs are out immediately in that scenario, and then it goes down to the other two teams. So there's no saving grace here for them at all. There's no back door in in any tiebreaker scenario for them right now, unless, you know, unless uh, the them and the Giants get hot and it's between the two of them. So the Cubs have got to take care of business tonight, and I truly believe they've got to sweep the Rockies this weekend. 
I, I agree with you 100%. There is, there is no more margin for error. Everything's a must win at this point. But because of how tough the last week is and on the road, I mean, you're not going to get any breaks from Milwaukee. Even if they clinch ahead of that series, they've got, you know, Craig Council's been around this game a long time. The integrity of the schedule matters. For a team that's still going for a playoff spot like the Cubs, they're going to put their, their regular team out there. So, you know, as tough as that is, you have to win. All four of these games leading into that is must win because it's absurd to think that you're going to just manhandle that last road trip. Uh, down the stretch. There's going to be some losses in there, so you need to, to build in as much as you can now. Okay, so l- let's talk about this big picture item before we dive into some minutiae stuff. Craig Council's a free agent at the end of the year. He's going to have suitors. He may want to stay in Milwaukee, but I think the money may get too big for Milwaukee's taste. If you were the Cubs... Would you sign Craig Council and move on from David Ross? I know the fan base doesn't like David. I think he's done a way better job than people give him credit for. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, boy, chalk that one up. Uh, yeah, shock. I, when you look at this roster, they didn't have a lot of depth. They didn't have um, – a lot of things had to go right to even get where they are right now. And they had a lot of things go wrong along the way. Uh, that bullpen um, proved that it wasn't what they thought it was out of the gate the first half of the season. He managed to squeeze out of it a lot more than we thought he was going to by the all-star break. And now, now guys are hurt again and Stroman's in there. And so who knows how that looks the rest of the way. I think on balance, he's done a good job. They obviously play hard for him. And that's a big sign uh, for any manager when you're, when you're measuring how effective he is. Uh, so I would say, uh, I, I, it, it's difficult because I think Craig Council is one of the top, maybe three managers in the game. So, so there is that, but I don't think you can justify firing Rossi for, for what this team's done this year uh, at all. And if anything, maybe, uh, maybe he deserves uh, uh, one, one more shot to really prove who he is because we said going into this year, that this year would be the first chance to see what kind of manager he is because of all the adversity and the weirdness that went on before that. Yeah, he's going to finish with more wins than he was projected to. Right, right. And the same can be said for, like, David Bell over, over with the Reds. And peop- and, and, and I, I can tell you from being here, Cincinnati fans are all over him the same way Chicago fans are all over Rossi. Part of that goes with the territory. Part of it's everybody thinks they're a manager, right? Um, and that they could do it better. So uh, I do think Craig Council is that good. I don't think some of these other guys, Rossi included, are as bad as a lot of fans would have you believe. Yeah, the funny thing is you watch social media as much as you and I do, and fans are like, what is this guy doing? And I'm thinking, you have no idea who's available in the bullpen, who might have been uh, sick, out late, has an issue at home. Like, they have no clue. For for sure. No no question about it. All that plays into it. And if you're a good manager, you know your players. You, you, know, you know what makes them tick. And that goes into a lot of these decisions. Decisions that, as you point out, people don't see. The, 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 the facts behind those decisions. Okay, so Co- Cody Bellinger has cooled off as of late. He did hit a home run the other night, but it was a blowout game already. It was 10-1, to 1, I think, when he hit a three-run bomb in the eighth. Do you think he's the Cubs MVP? Do you think that MVP is Justin Steele? Or... The guy who's been a top five hitter the last 60 some days, Seiya Suzuki. Um, four words, Cap. Who the hell cares? I mean, geez, have you seen where, where this team is right now? I mean, Cody yeah, Bellinger's cooled off. Hold That's on a minute. Why. The season That's ended today. Won. The season ended right now. They're in the playoffs. But it doesn't. And they've lost nine out of 12. And, and part of that is Cody Bellinger cooling off. And part of that is Justin Steele having a couple of clunkers. And part of that is injuries to your bullpen. I mean, say a Suzuki, fine. He's finishing strong. Good for him. That's good for the Cubs. They need it big time. But you want to start talking team MVPs right now? Let's see if they even get to the friggin' playoffs. And by the way, it's not going to take 90 wins to get there. It might take 83, 84, maybe 85 tops. 
I mean, uh, uh, these teams that are clustered right now are at 79 wins. I believe the Cubs included. So let me see. Yes, yeah, the Cubs, Cubs are 79 at 73. Miami, 79 at 74. Reds, 79 at 75. And you've got and you've got the Cubs with 10 left, the Marlins with nine left, the Reds with eight left. So you're talking, even if the Cubs won out, they'd have 89 wins. That ain't going to happen. So 85, 86 maybe is the best case scenario. Um, Miami's got uh, the Mets and Pittsburgh to finish with. The Reds have Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and St. Louis to finish with. I mean, my gosh, man. Uh, you're talking about MVPs? MVPs? I mean, we're, we're talking about playoff races here. These, these guys these guys need a hell of a lot more than Seiya Suzuki, no matter how good he's been, to, to finish this off and actually get in the playoffs. The interesting thing about this Cubs team is they are missing Nick Madrigal more than I think they realize because Candelario is right. still on the injured list. So you're down to your third, third baseman. Well, not only that, but I would suggest that based on – don't at me, people. Based on some of the metrics, whether you agree with them or not, and maybe the eye test if you've been watching, Nick Madrigal might be their best third baseman this year. Defensively, what would be the odds that, that we could have gotten in Vegas if we could have somehow bet on that and proven that when the season started? But, but that's how good he's become over there. Good enough that when Jamer Candelario was also available, they put Candelario over first to get the matchups they wanted without without a hesitation because because Madrigal's been handling third base so well. That's a huge loss. They're down to high strikeout Patrick Wisdom playing. Jamer's still out. He, he's probably not back. Maybe at the end of the year, but probably, you know, playoffs maybe if, if they get there. And so that Madrigal loss is, is maybe – that might be as big a loss given when it happened – and what he was doing for your team at the time, then some of these other ones, then, then you know, it's hard to say then, then Stroman is a starter, but, but really, then, then, then many of these, then any given single reliever that's gone down, Al, Alzali, you know, with all due respect. But Madrigal did a lot for your lineup. And this lineup was a big reason that the Cubs were in it until that stretch of uh, 10 days or so when they lost all those games to the Diamondbacks. It was it, they were scoring runs, and so uh, that's a big deal. That, 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 okay, that's huge. what is the what is the single number one thing the Cubs have to address in the offseason other than re-signing Cody Bellinger if they can get that done? It feels like the same thing we always talk about, Cap. It's pitching. Pitching is the most important thing in the game. Starting pitching is the most important thing in the game. We don't know what's going on with Marcus Stroman. He's probably back. You could make the case that you've got five or six reasonable rotation options, assuming Kyle Hendricks is back and the whole thing, uh, going into next year. But I think you need to add at least one reliable, veteran, established front half of the rotation starter, and you definitely have to rebuild that bullpen. Even though uh, Alzale showed you a lot with, with what he did over the course of the whole year, you've got young arms in the system. But you've got to rebuild the bullpen. You've got to get at least one real good starting pitcher. And I tell you what, that's going to be tough because the Cardinals have already come out and said publicly, we're going after three. We need three guys. And from what I hear, Aaron Nola is right near the top of their list, and they probably think they're going to get Sonny Gray uh, uh, before any of, uh, of the rest. And they might try to trade for somebody. So – I think the Cubs are going to go all out to try and sign Bellinger. I don't think they go north of six years. Could they put a seventh year together? I guess if that was what it took, but they're not going eight, nine, and ten years. I don't know if anyone's going to give him that, though. From the people I've talked to in the game, do not believe he's getting eight, nine, ten years. They don't believe it. Cap, I just saw something, and I didn't do a deep dive on this, so, so anybody listening to this, can go look it up for themselves and see what they find. But I saw a, a reference to Cody Bellinger that his numbers this year are a lot better than his contact rate. Right now, I'm not a big analytics guy. I like to judge things based on what I see. And Rod Carew didn't have the greatest contact rate in the world, but he was one of the best hitters in the history of the world. So 
So take it for what it's worth, but for a big slugging left-handed bat that you're going to pay a lot of money to and build a lineup around, that might be a number, especially with some of these smart guy front offices that, that temper some of the offers a little bit. They might look at it and say, well, you know, he had a great rebound season, but is it sustainable? Did he do the, are his peripherals what we would want to see as we project him going forward? And so there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of in the weeds analysis on him by anybody that's looking to make a big investment in him. And by the way, I would suggest the Cubs as well. So don't be so hell bent certain that they're going to be all in uh, when it comes to ponying up. So, okay, if they look at pitching, Jed Hoyer just came back from Japan where he wanted his eyes, he wanted to look at the number one pitching prospect in Japan who's a beast, beast. Now, that's going to get really, really expensive. That's probably north of $200 million to get that guy. Do it. How, how far do you think he goes budgetary-wise? Because someone I trust who knows said they're – like, boy, we were counting on Stroman opting out. Right. Do it. I mean, Stroman's only around one more year regardless anyway. And as, uh, and as uh, Jed has uh, loved to say in the past, there's no such thing as a bad one-year contract. So you're only on the hook one more year for him anyway. And by the way, don't forget Jason Hayward falls off the books after this year. I'd say do it. Go in. And and if you're if you're worried about sort of the – I don't know, uh, translation to the big leagues and whether you can trust it out of the shoot and for all that big money. Take a look at Kode Senga this year. Kode Senga should, should get some love for the rookie of the year. And I don't think Corbin Carroll's going to He's been really good in a, for in a the walk. Match. But he's been really, really good. really good for the match. He's been among the best pitchers in the National League for a team that hasn't had a lot to play for for a long time. Guys just stepped up and, and pitched big. Uh, if Jed likes what he saw, saw and if his evaluators – uh, bring good reports to him, and they like what they've seen in the time they've watched him. I'd say go for it because look, you bring back, uh, you know, you got Steele coming back. You bring back Hendricks, who we know, you know, he's the kind of guy that can give you. Yeah, he doesn't have to be front of the rotation, game one playoff starter. He can be three, four. Be really effective in that spot. Justin Steele can be up toward the front. You got Stroman coming back because he wants to, because he doesn't want to have to. Fine, drop him in anywhere you want, and then you bring this guy in and put him in the top two spots. Now you've got depth. You've not only got depth, you've got quality. And you've got Cade Horton close. Thank you. You've, that's where I was going next. You've got some of these younger guys, too, that slot in anywhere behind. And I didn't even mention Jamison Tyone. He's got to be better next year than he was this year. Am I right? Yeah, you would think, and he's not going anywhere. It's $68 million four-year deal. They're not letting him right. go. Right. So I say do it. Go get him and, 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 uh, and keep – Keep pushing because look, you got the Cardinals down right now who are there in a, a, a lot of flux right now. They desperately need some pitching. We don't know if they're going to get it all. It might not be enough if they, if they did get the three starters they wanted. Cincinnati's coming. They're young. Who knows what, what they're going to do in the offseason. They don't actually need much with the experience some of this young talent has gotten this year. Um, Pirates, I wouldn't worry so much about them. But I don't think the Brewers are going away either. Um, so you got to beat the Brewers. Um, you got a chance to stay ahead of the Reds, go get them. Use your resources. Go get them. Own this division next year. Give it your best shot with, with your best uh, advantage you have over everybody else, and that's the resources to go get this guy. If you had to put a ticket on somebody right now to win the National League not named Atlanta, who is it? L.A. or Milwaukee or somebody else? Not Atlanta. I'd say Milwaukee. That's where I'd go because LA's yeah. pitching is so banged up. Yeah, and if not Milwaukee, I mean, if Milwaukee's one A, Philly's one B. I think the I think the Dodgers are a clear sort of third in your scenario, but fourth, you know, if you're counting the the Braves. The American League, interestingly enough, you know, you look at the teams there who you think can win it. I don't think the Minnesota Twins can win it. I still question Tampa Bay. They've had so many injury issues that they've had to deal with. 
I think the American League is kind of open, but if I had to pick a team, I'm taking the Orioles. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we probably, you and I probably have a bias uh, for Brandon Hyde, too. We both like him. we like he's, him. He's a friend of the podcast. Um, but uh, they've got as much or probably demonstrably more talent than anybody else. And that's to take nothing away from the Rays lineup. I'll tell you one more thing about the Rays. The Wander Franco situation, uh, it's a small market team. I don't think they took quite the scrutiny hit, uh, quite the distraction hit being a small market team when when he got put on a restricted list for all that crap going on back home with uh, with underage uh, girls and stuff. So, so uh, when they get to the playoffs, now national media is going to be all over them every single day yeah and you wonder how that's going to play once they get there um and let me back up uh, just a second to to give you one more piece of rationale on the dodgers this is something that people may not uh may not know but the dodgers have had so many problems in their starting rotation this year seems like they just waltz to another division championship they did win another one it was pretty freaking amazing if you ask me but uh, they have used 17 starting pitchers this year. The Reds have used 17 starting pitchers this year. That's how I know because th- that's the other National League team that, that's used that many, which is astounding for a team that's got the record it does. Usually it's the bad teams because the only team that's got more is, uh, I believe it's Oakland that, that's used more starting pitchers this year. So uh, we know the trouble that the Reds have had in their rotation. It's an awful rotation all year long it's been. But the Dodgers have always pitched and always gotten something out of their starters, and yet that's what they're down to this year, having used that many starters. So, so when you get to the postseason, um, you, you kind of know where they're digging, how deep they're digging into their system to, to find competitive pitching. Well, when we tape next week, we will have pretty good clarity of whether or not the Cubs are getting in. Because if they don't handle their business the next four days with – Pittsburgh tonight and the Rockies, the chances of getting in are slim and none. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty much going to be it because they'll be they'll they'll be looking uphill, not only at a really tough schedule with Atlanta and Milwaukee on the road down the stretch that final week, but also, again, like we talked about, they've got to not only catch these guys or or you know hold hold serve against these opponents, but they don't have the tiebreaker against any of them, and and this year different than past years, same as last year, but different than before that. You don't play off the last the last uh, playoff spot anymore. For 100 years, it, it was if you tied with a chance to go to the playoffs or lose or out, you played that that off. Not the anymore. Not anymore. It's all tiebreakers and Cubs don't have any of them against the Diamondbacks, the Marlins, or the Reds. Well, let me just tell you this. I think my Cubs are going. I think you'll be eating at the White Castle next week and going, God, I can't believe I'm not covering a playoff team except with Cap on the podcast. Dude, I'll eat I'll eat four of these crappy sliders on the next podcast if you're right. You mark it down. You're going to be eating sliders. Gordon, have a great rest of your day. All right, you too, Cap. You got it. If you're a gambling man, bet the Cubs tonight. They're going to get it. Oh, good. That's it. Take that, Oviedo. Here we come. For Gordon, (laughs) I'm Cap. We'll have another edition next week when the Cubs are in Atlanta and then headed to Milwaukee. Have a great rest of your day. Go get some White Castles. Sponsor us. Take that. Yeah, please, please.